There's a superb diagnostic tool for measuring the true health of the economy that the government refuses to use. Here's why. Hello, I'm Steve Forbes, and this is What's Ahead, where you get the insights you need to better navigate these turbulent times. The White House and most economists are saying the economy is humming along at a respectable pace, with GDP growing at a real annual rate of 25 to 3%. But don't be complacent. There's a better metric called gross output, or GO, for gauging the actual condition of the economy and its future prospects. And that is spelling trouble. Everyone is familiar with GDP. We think of it as telling us how the economy is doing. Hardly anyone has heard of gross output. But don't be put off by the awful name. GEO actually gives a far more thorough picture of how things are. GDP measures final sales in the economy. It turns a blind eye to what goes into making the products and services. By contrast, GEO takes into account spending at all stages of production. GDP virtually ignores, for example, business-to-business -business sales, which are about half of the sales in the economy. It's as if supply chains don't exist. GDP says consumer sales make up 70% of the economy. In the real world, that's wrong. Consumers can't consume unless the stuff is made and offered in the first place. Without business investment, enterprises can't expand. Research and productivity wither. Incomes stagnate. Entrepreneurs can't create and innovate. In essence, the difference between GDP and GO is the difference between an X-ray and a CAT scan. GEO not only gives a truer picture of the economy, it is a better predictor of what lies ahead. Eminent economist Mark Skousen, who has long led the charge to have GEO get the attention it richly deserves, notes that in the first half of 2022, the economy was declining according to GDP, and forecasters were declaring tougher times were ahead. GEO signaled the opposite. Things were going to get better. GEO was right. Now, warns Skousen, GEO is flashing trouble. It is expanding less than GDP. So why isn't GEO given its proper prominence? Because it goes against the reigning political and economic dogma that consumers, not businesses, are key to prosperity. GEO shows the opposite. Business-to-business -business sales and business investment are what produce prosperity and make possible higher standards of living. It emphasizes the folly of more taxes, regulations, and government mandates. That's why the Bureau of Economic Analysis doesn't put out GEO numbers until months after the release of the initial GDP numbers. Instead, as Skousen rightly asserts, it should be released when the GDP number is released and should be treated as the equal, if not the superior, of GDP. But don't hold your breath. Too many economic and political sacred cows are at stake. It'll take an order of the next president to bring about what will be an intellectual and political economic revolution. I'm Steve Forbes. Thanks for listening. Do send in your comments and suggestions. I look forward to being with you soon again.